Hey, this is Donnie Smith, and welcome to the first episode of the Eastwood video series. In this video series, some students and myself are going to show you how to paint a car. We have a Mustang that we're going to be painting black. Now, we're going to paint the inside also, so we're going to show you how to paint the outside and the jams as well. Now, to do this, I'm going to tell you up front, it does take quite a bit of work but the end result is gonna be worth it. During these videos, we're gonna be using some Eastwood products. And I'm pretty excited to try some of these products myself and excited to share them with you. And you can visit our friends at Eastwood by clicking right here. The first thing you wanna do before we start this Mustang project or any job you're working on is to wash it with soap and water. I know this sounds really basic, but you'd be surprised how often this step is skipped or ignored. This is such a small job to do, but you'd be surprised of how many paint problems this could result in. You could have problems like fish eyes, adhesion problems, a lot of problems that could be eliminated if you just washed your car first with soap and water. Not only will washing your car first keep you out of trouble in the paint shop, but listen to these other tips we have for you. Washing your car will help with inspection and looking for damage. It'll also save you time and money. You may be saying to yourself, how in the heck is washing my car going to save me money? Well, I'm going to tell you, you know, your car is full of contaminants from the environment and the products we use, things like armor all and waxes. And if you just start trying to sand your car without removing these silicones and waxes, you're going to load your sandpaper. You know, you're going to use more sandpaper and it's going to take more effort. So any step we can do like washing your car to eliminate extra money in sandpaper and effort, you know, that's always a win-win in my opinion. Another tip is to use a silicone free soap. That's another great tip, Logan, because a lot of the car soaps on the market today, you know, they have silicones in them. They're designed to protect the wax that, on, that is on them or designed to put an additional coat of wax on them. We don't want that. We want to strip all the wax off whenever we're getting ready to paint something. So make sure when you're shopping for some uh, car soap, make sure it does not have any silicones in it. All right, enough about washing the car. Let's move on. Next, we're going to develop a repair plan. Grabbing a grinder to start grinding or, you know, grabbing some sandpaper to start sanding is another mistake often made. That's right, Dylan. Before we do that, before we start working on the car, let's step back, take a look at it. You know, determine what we're going to need to do, how we're going to do it, and what we need to do that. We want to figure all this out before we actually start working on the car. Just like a doctor, a surgeon, you know, they, they know what they're going to do before they operate on you. They don't just open you up and then determine that. We want to do the same thing. We want to have a plan before we just jump on the car and start working on it. And by doing this, you're going to eliminate a lot of mistakes and last minute surprises because the last thing we want is something to come up when we're just about ready to get the car completed and realize there's something that you know we need to do or something missing. So let's get all this figured out up front. Take a little time up front, but it'll save a lot of time in the end. When inspecting your car and developing a repair plan, here are some things to consider. First, you want to inspect the paint finish. You know, does it have any cracks in it? Is it peeling? Is there any rust bubbles? Things like that. Some of these things may require that we have to strip the car down to the metal. So determine what kind of condition the paint's in. Now, if you inspect the paint and it's in good condition, you know, it may be a candidate just to be able to sand and repaint. Now, just a little confusion there. If you have to strip, there's usually a reason. A lot of your older restoration jobs, there's rust or you know, there's problems with some type of paint defect and you're going to have to strip to metal. But a lot of people think that every job you do needs to be stripped to metal and that's just not true. If the paint's in good condition, you know, the factory paint's on there, you've also got factory e-coat, you know, where it was dipped from the factory. And we can put like epoxies and things, which is good for corrosion protection. But when it comes to corrosion protection, you know, superior, what's the best, you know, what the factory had on there, that e-coat is going to provide the best protection possible. So if the paint's in good condition, I recommend not stripping it to bare metal. In fact, if we get new parts that has e-coat on it, uh, we don't strip that either. We will final sand it with 500, try to leave just as much of that e-coat on as possible. Now, if we burn through the metal in a few spots, that's fine. You know, we can put some epoxy or some self-etched primer on it. But if the paint's in good condition, you know, I don't recommend stripping it down to metal. And in the case of this Mustang, the paint's in excellent condition. So it's a candidate to maybe just be able to sand and paint it, but there's something else we need to consider first. Now we need to check the paint mill thickness. How thick is the paint? After checking the mills on the paint, 
um, from previous jobs, the paint must, might be too thick, so we might have to partially strip the paint. You can think of this like shingles on a house. You know, before they come and put new shingles on, they usually take the old shingles off before they put the new ones on. Now, I think this has something to do with the weight, but you know, you can think of the coatings on your car the same way. Now, I don't really think weight is an issue, but if you get too many coatings on there, you might cause adhesion problems. It may cause some of your gaps to be too narrow because of all the coatings. When you open the door, you know, they may rub and knock chips of paint off and things like that. So if the paint's too thick, we may have to strip some of that off. So how thick is too thick? Well, it's generally recommended if the paint is over 12 mils thick that you need to take some of that down, either partially strip or strip it. Checking the paint mill thickness, you know, it's a pretty simple process. We'll have Becca demonstrate how to do that. Checking the paint mill thickness, see if it's factory paint or if it's been painted before. So the mills on this Mustang, four to six mills. You know, that's perfect. That indicates OE on finish, you know, from the factory. It hasn't been painted before. So this makes a perfect candidate just to sand and, and prep it to get it ready for paint. Now, Beck had demonstrated the paint using a digital gauge, digital mill thickness gauge, but they also have little magnetic gauges that you can use, and they're a lot less expensive, but it'll get the job done. Before the sanding repairs start, you need to kind of find your dents, like take a pen and circle them. Mostly the small ones because the big ones you'll see after you're done sanding, but the small ones you'll lose during, you know, sanding, repair, and grinding and stuff. You'll lose them under the dust. So you need to be sure to mark those first. Now the best way to find the dents is to look at the light reflections. You know, look at the light in the paint surface, and as you are, go over the entire car and just kind of, if you think you see something, move back and forth. And as you do that, the, uh, if there's any damage there, the, the reflection is going to highlight the damage. So be sure and go around the entire car doing this, just kind of looking at it, looking at the light reflection in the paint and kind of moving back and forth. If you do this, you'll find a lot of damage, a lot of dents that you wouldn't found otherwise. Yeah, it's happened to all of us, or I know it has me. You know, when you go to repairing something and you get into this butchered up work where someone plastered over an inch of body filler on there and when you initially inspected the car you just saw a little dent. You get into it, you start grinding and it grows and grows and grows on you. So what do you do? Do you uh, repair the entire area or you just try to feather in the new body filler to the existing body filler? I mean what do you do? Well that's a decision you're going to have to make on your own but there is a way to know up front before you start working on the car if there's body filler. They now have a body filler gauge that will indicate if there's any body filler on the car and how much. This will allow you to plan for additional time to do the repairs if needed. The body filler detector, it's a new tool. It'll measure up to a quarter of an inch and there should not be more than a quarter of an inch body filler on a car. Most uh, manufacturers of body filler say maximum of a quarter of an inch after sanded. So you should not find more than a quarter of an inch. Now there is another way. You can use a magnet to determine if there is body filler, but you really don't know how thick. And that's what this tool really helps you determine. Is it on there properly? Is it too thick? And you'll know this all up front. This tool won first place at SEMA a couple years ago, and I think it's a pretty cool tool. You know, I sure wish that, that I had one through the years. Checking for filler like this with a gauge, you know, that can uh, save you or eliminate you from surprises or additional work that you wasn't really aware of when you started the job. Now that we have an idea of the damage, you know, how, how extensive is the damage, what damage do we have, you know, is there any body filler, and the condition the paint's in, you know, do we need to strip, partial strip, or just final sand and paint. Now we have all this in mind. So now we know what repair path to take. In the case of my Mustang, we kind of got to take the easy way out because there was little damage, um, the paint was still in good condition, and there was little to no body filler. Now we are going to take one last step to ensure that there are no silicone or contaminants on the car by using a wax and grease remover. Now we're using a wax and grease remover from Eastwood and this makes it real easy to be able to spray on there and wipe off real convenient. But if you don't have an aerosol spray like this, you know, I still recommend getting a pump up bottle, you know, if you get the wax and grease remover that comes in a, a gallon or a quart in the liquid form, you know, use one of those pump up bottles, pour it in there, pump it up and spray it on. This will save uh, the amount of wax and grease remover you use and it'll just simplify the process. 
Okay, now we've got the car all clean, ready. We know what we're gonna do. Next thing we're gonna disassemble. Now we'll go through some of the disassemble steps in the next video. We don't wanna make these videos too long, but be sure, I mean, these are some uh, basic steps but they're often forgotten. These are very, very important. Don't eliminate these steps, avoid these steps. Be sure and properly clean the car. Wash with soap and water, inspect you know, the damage, check the paint, mill thickness, the paint condition. Be sure and follow all these steps. You know, is there body filler on the car? Because if you do these up front, it may take a little bit of time, but it's gonna save you a lot of time and frustration in the end, I guarantee you. Throughout the entire process, getting a car ready to paint, it's gonna take a lot of time, it's gonna take a lot of effort, and it's gonna take a lot of money. So that's why I stress doing these first steps is very important. May not be the most interesting to watch, but if you want your paint job to be the best, you want high quality, you want professional results, you need to follow these steps. Thanks for watching this video, and be sure, watch the upcoming videos, these Eastwood series, because we're actually gonna get started on this car and show you the steps of what to do whenever we start repairing and sanding and painting and disassembling this car. You don't want to miss any of those steps, so be sure and catch this video series the last Tuesday of every month. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.